sir. The mitochondria, very good question. Yes, the mitochondria has its own supply of NAD and FAD that's there. It has to synthesize its own. Yep. Okay, let's turn our attention to oxidizing fatty acids. We all want to lose weight. Let's oxidize some fatty acids. Okay, now, fatty acids, you know, of course, are the constituents of fats. Of the other constituent of fat being glycerol. Okay? So we want to go break down fat. We want to break it down into fatty acids, and fatty acids we want to burn so that we make ATP ultimately. All right? Well, to do that, we first of all have to remove the fatty acids from the fat. That requires action of a group of enzymes known as lipases, L-I-P-A-S-E-S. -E okay? The part of our reaction we're concerned with is right here, lipases. So we want to break down fat. That's what we're doing. We're cleaving those fatty acids off. We now get free fatty acids. Those free fatty acids can then further be broken down into things that give us a lot of energy. Okay. Well, why can't I just go out and lose weight the way I want to lose weight and easy lose weight? One of the things I have to do is I have to actually activate lipases. Lipases are activated hormonally. Okay? Lipases are activated hormonally. When the body sends out a signal saying it's time to activate the lipases, that travels as a hormone. That hormone binds to the receptor on a cell. That receptor binding causes a signaling process to occur inside the cell. The net result of which is lipase gets activated. It's a multi-step process. It doesn't happen immediately. What makes the hormones? What makes the hormones? Okay. So a couple of hormone players that play important roles in this process include epinephrine, which you know is adrenaline. We've talked a little bit about that before. Countering the effects of that are insulin. There are other hormones that play roles as well, but the two that I've talked about that, that, that are relevant for here are those two. Okay, those the, the, at least the insulin's made in your pancreas, uh, epinephrine's made in your brain. All right, now I don't want to go through the details here because that's not the important thing. The important thing is this is a slow process. It's a relatively slow process. If you are needing to get out of somewhere very quickly, you need to escape quickly, you need to have quick energy, not slow energy. And quick energy comes from sugars. That's why we use sugars. They, tr they move in the bloodstream very readily. They're soluble in the bloodstream. Fats are not. Fatty acids are not. They have to be packaged up so they can travel in the bloodstream. So if we need quick energy, fats and fatty acids are not a good way to go. Glucose is a good way to go. And that's why we use glucose for most of our needs, because most of our needs are fairly immediate. OK. Well, fatty acids are a problem for a cell. They're a problem for a cell because they act like detergents. And detergents, you may remember, denature proteins. So if I have a lot of free fatty acids sitting around, they're going to denature my proteins. That would not be a good career move. Cells take those fatty acids and they link them to coenzyme A just like we saw acetyl-CoA. So CoA, I told you earlier, provides a handle. It also keeps this guy from becoming a detergent. Now, this happens once a cell grabs a fatty acid. So your body releases, you're on a diet, your body releases a bunch of fatty acids, a cell gobbles them up. By the way, fats are stored in special cells in your body. They're not stored in all cells of your body. Fats are cells uh, stored in tissues called adipose tissue. Adipose meaning fat. Okay. Fatty acids make it into the cell. The cell says, okay, let's put a CoA on there, and now I've got a CoA, and everybody's happy. That takes energy to do that, but it gives a handle 
for that fatty acid that the cell wants to use. All right? Well, then the cell does a curious thing. All right? It does a very curious thing. It's gone to this trouble to put this CoA on there, and you would think that that would be really simple now to move that fatty acid with that CoA into the mitochondrion because fatty acid oxidation occurs inside the mitochondrion. However, with a CoA on there, it won't cross the mitochondrial membrane. So the cell has just gone to the trouble to put the CoA on there. Okay. It goes to the mitochondria and it bumps its head there because the there's no transport system to move that fatty acid in there with a CoA on there. So in this intermembrane space, okay, there's the outer membrane, there's the inner membrane. In this intermembrane space, there is an enzyme that swaps CoA for a, another molecule called carnitine. So CoA is taken off, carnitine is put on, and then you've got an acyl carnitine. That's what's shown right here. There's a protein in the mitochondrial intermembrane that will move acyl carnitine into the matrix where oxidation can occur. And guess what? Inside the matrix, carnitine is taken off and CoA is put back on. Cells aren't very efficiently designed. Carnitine comes off, CoA is put back on, and now we're back where we started. We've got an, a, an acyl CoA. Acyl meaning fatty acid, A C Y L. We have an acyl CoA. So acyl CoA is what will be oxidized in the, the, the mitochondrial matrix, and it's a process called beta oxidation. I've got time to tell you about it. Okay, so let's look at what happens in beta oxidation. All right? Oh boy, a pathway. Look at this. It's not bad. Not bad. You've seen reactions like it already in the citric acid cycle. I told you I was going to tell you about them again. Here we go. Here's an acyl CoA. This acyl CoA, okay, all the things I'm going to be describing to you happen, happen between carbons number two and three. That's known as the beta and gamma, which is what we call beta oxidation. I'm sorry, alpha and beta, but they're, they're, it's the what's it's why it's called beta oxidation. But all the actions occurring right here between these two carbons. Here's where the carboxyl was. Here's alpha. Here's beta. That's carbon number one, two, three. All the actions between carbons two and three. This is true for both oxidation and also for fatty acid synthesis. When I talk about that tomorrow. Oxidation. All right. What happens? This guy gets oxidized. How does it get oxidized? Well, it gets oxidized in exactly the same kind of reaction that succinate got oxidized to fumarate. In that reaction, which was catalyzed by succinyl dehydrogenase, FAD was converted to FADH2. A single bond was converted to a double trans bond. And there we are. This enzyme is one of only two enzymes you need to know the name of here. It's called acyl-CoA dehydrogenase, or you can call it acyl-CoA DH. Why do I want you to know that one? Because this enzyme right here, some forms of it have been implicated to the cause of sudden infant death syndrome. There's three different versions of the enzyme. We don't need to talk about it right here, but one of the forms of the enzyme okay, is deficient in many infants that die uh, of sudden infant death syndrome. Not all of them, but many. Okay? So it's thought that some causes of sudden infant death syn syndrome are an inability to metabolize fatty acids. They get to a certain point, and then they can't go any further, and that's what happens with some of the infants. Okay, now, here's this double bond. It's a trans double bond, just like we saw in fumarate. In fumarate, we added a water across that double bond, and guess what? We add a water across that double bond. The oxygen goes on, the hydroxide, I'm sorry, goes on to carbon number three. In fatty acid oxidation, this would, this would have made malate. Malate got oxidized to oxaloacetate. NAD went to NADH. Look at this, NAD going to NADH, and now 
We've oxidized this to a ketone, just like we did with oxaloacetate. You learn the citric acid cycle, you learn this. All right? The names, no, I'm, I'm not giving you the names. I'm not expecting you're going to know the names or the structures, other than the fact that you need to know what happens at carbons two and three. Double bond, hydroxyl, ketone. The next step breaks off a two carbon piece. The two carbon piece that gets broken off, it splits right here between carbons two and three where all the action was and gives us an acetyl CoA and it gives us a fatty acid that has two fewer carbons. Guess where this guy goes? Citric acid cycle, right? This is all occurring in the matrix of the mitochondrion. It's very convenient. It's all there waiting for it now to get oxidized. That last one is an enzyme that I also expect you're going to know the name of, thiolase. Thiolase catalyzes the formation of acetyl-CoA. We'll see thiolase plays a role in another metabolic pathway later. That's why I want you to know the name of it here. It catalyzes the breaking of acetyl-CoA off of this last intermediate. It gives you a fatty acid that's got two fewer carbons. So then we just keep turning the cycle. OK, questions about that? You just did a cycle. Or I just did a cycle. Should we stretch? Let's stretch. You guys look a little tired. You need a joke. How about a song? A joke and a song. Oh, you guys, you guys aren't demanding too much here. Uh, let me think if I have a joke for you. Um, Okay, I'll tell you a joke. This is a dumb joke. So, you know how they always tell these jokes and they pick on ethnic groups or they pick on sexes or something? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pick on a group that really needs picking on, okay? Dean, well, biochemists. <laughs> deans, okay? So they, there's, these, there's these two deans, okay? And they're sitting on this, this, this red eye flight going from Los Angeles to New York, okay? And these two deans are sitting there, and uh, it's, you know, the, the, the plane takes taking off, and it's about, oh, I don't know, it's not quite a red eye. It's like 8 o'clock at night, you know? And the pilot comes on, and he says, this is your pilot speaking. You know, we'll be flying from Los Angeles to New York. Estimated flight time, we should be arriving in New York around midnight, you know? Oh, this is great, you know? And so they kind of lean back, you know, and they're sitting in the first class section, and they're feeling pretty good, and, and uh, pretty soon there's this bump, you know? Pilot comes on and goes, uh, sorry about that bump. Uh, it appears we've lost our number four engine, uh, but we still have three engines uh, to go, so um, I think we'll be okay. We'll be landing in New York about 1 a.m. He goes, well, you know, okay, that's okay. You know, so they go back to sleep, and pretty soon there's another bump. You know, you guys have heard this joke, right? No? Okay. Pilot says, well, you're not going to believe this, but uh, that was the number uh, two engine. Number two engine's given out, and... Um, well, we still have two engines left. Uh, we'll be flying into New York about 2 a.m. Wow, man, this is weird. What's my, what's my chances of this, right? Ah, go back to sleep, you know. Pretty soon later, bump. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, sorry about that. Number three engine's out, but uh, we're, we're down to one engine. We should make it into New York by uh, about 3 a.m. The one dean looks at the other dean and says, you know, if that last engine goes out, he says, we're going to be flying all night. That's a dean for you, huh? Hi, dean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I promised a song. We'll do a song. This is another one of my favorite songs. This one is called When Acids Get Oxidized. The fatty acids carry by CoA, CoA, are oxidized inside the mitochondria. They get to there, as you have seen, by hitching rides on carnitine. Then it goes away when acids get oxidized. Electrons move through membranes, yes.